Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the Iraq surge. So last time we looked at costly signaling, and in this lecture we're going to see how costly signaling applies to the Iraq surge that the United States implemented in 2007. So we're talking about the Iraq war here. We can break the Iraq war down into about five different phases. So if you were politically aware back in the beginning of 2003, you might remember the negotiation phase. This was really quite amazing. It was diplomacy almost at its most transparent it's ever been. And as we all know, though, that diplomacy went nowhere and the United States ends up invading. So the second phase is the invasion and the immediate aftermath of the invasion. The invasion goes very well. The United States suffers fewer than 200 casualties. So it's really an excellent war for the United States in terms of the military portion. As we know, winning the peace is going to be a lot more difficult later on. But the invasion lasts not very long. The United States wins very quickly. But then for a prolonged period afterward, there is a lot of lawlessness in the country. That's something that we've talked about previously. Well, that lawlessness eventually erupts into civil war. You could say that the civil war started at various different points, but I think a clear turning point was August 2003. That is when the Jordanian embassy was bombed and the United Nations headquarters in Iraq was also bombed. And that's what basically makes Iraq go from a lawless country into this downward spiral and eventually turns into full-fledged civil war. Now, because the Civil War starts, the United States starts suffering a lot more casualties. Again, there were fewer than 200 casualties during the invasion, but as time progresses, the United States eventually pays thousands and thousands of lives as the cost of war. And because of that additional cost, the American political opposition increases during the time. So the 2004 presidential election between John Kerry and George W. Bush is a lot about the Iraq War, with John Kerry, of course, reversing his position from the original authorization vote and now being against the current policy in Iraq, or at least the current policy back then during the election. And then things are even worse in 2006 during the midterm election, where the Democrats as a party run mostly against the Iraq War and do very well in midterm elections. So at this time, President Bush is really suffering, and he's facing a lot of domestic opposition to get himself out of Iraq. And yet that's exactly what he does not do. So in 2007, Bush develops this surge strategy where he tries to gather American political support to get thousands and thousands more troops from the United States sent into Iraq to handle this civil war. It ends up being about 30,000 people. So this is very difficult for Bush to pull off because, again, he's in this environment where there's a lot of American domestic political opposition, and yet he's spending all of this political capital to try to get this to go, and actually he gets it to go, and he has about 30,000 more troops enter Iraq in 2007. As we know now, the surge actually pays off to some degree. There was sustained relative peace in Iraq following the surge. Now, there are many explanations for this, and I think all of them have some sort of use. Uh, first, there were actually more troops on the ground, right? This is the most obvious explanation. With more troops on the ground, you can do more stuff. And so because you have more troops, you should be having more success. Now, the one thing to note here is that 30,000 troops wasn't that much. I mean, of course, 30,000 troops is nice, but there were already about 130,000 American troops in Iraq at the time. So we're looking at about a 20 to, what is that, 25% increase in the number of troops. So it's not a huge, overwhelming number of troops, but of course, having more troops on the ground is useful. And that, of course, had to contribute to some degree to the success in Iraq following the surge. Uh, about that time, we also implemented a new counterinsurgency strategy, so changing the tactics also helped there. And also, by the time we get around to implementing the surge in 2007, a lot of the Sunnis that had been fighting in this civil war were getting massacred, and so there wasn't as much... Uh, opposition on their part because they had seen, well, they're getting slaughtered. And of course, if you're fighting a war, you're updating your belief about how likely you are to win. And if you're seeing that you're losing a lot, well, you're less likely to be at the bargaining table and be really restrictive and really demanding with how much you need in order to be settled and, and to walk off the battlefield in a peaceful settlement. So those are various explanations for why the Iraq surge worked. And I think there are all, again, to varying degrees, correct. So this last point, of course, is sort of uh, tangential to the Iraq surge. It's not because the surge, the surge didn't work because the surge was there. This was something that was just going on on the side, but it just coincided at the same time. Again, though, all of these to some degree are accurate, but there's a missing point here that someone who does not understand costly signaling would just completely not be aware of. So 
by going through all of that domestic political opposition, again, because the most recent two elections, the 2004 presidential election and the 2006 midterm election, were so focused on anti-Iraq war policies, by Bush spending all of this political capital at the beginning of 2007 to get a surge into Iraq, he was signaling commitment to Iraqi uh, security. Essentially, he was saying, hey, look, I know that there's domestic political opposition here, but I care so much about having the policy that I want, peace, in Iraq, that I am committed to doing this, and I'm going to spend that political capital to do that. So he's signaling that, at least through the end of his administration, he is committed to getting peace in Iraq, and he's not going to be cutting and running. Well, if you're a moderate Sunni in Iraq at this time, you're going to internalize that American commitment to maintaining the peace. And on top of that, the United States is offering various payments to Sunnis to try to get the Sunnis out of the civil war and get the Sunnis on the United States' side to help fight al-Qaeda in Iraq. So imagine that you're one of those moderate uh, Sunnis in Iraq and you see this. Well, your choices are to continue fighting against the Shia majority that you've been fighting a long war against and losing, and on top of that, fighting a resolved United States that's going to be evolved in Iraq for at least a couple of years. So it's essentially fighting a really uphill battle, or alternatively, you could accept the payments and work with the United States against al-Qaeda in Iraq. And so what happens in 2007, in part because of this costly signaling, is that the Sunnis do just that. They stop fighting and they start helping the United States and working with the United States to get rid of al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is, of course, what Bush was more concerned about in any case. All right, so that's an application of costly signaling. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.